What is, what's actually happening now is the is the um, is the uh, the brain is compiling itself. It's literally compiling at runtime. So it's kind of like a Python or something like that. But it's basically building all the connections and things like that. So uh, maybe here she is. Okay, so she can see in here. So if I make a loud noise, she'll get a fright. We can kind of um, zoom in. So let's see if I do this. We've just changed all the view keys. We can move the light around like that. So, you know, she's watching me and reacting to me. We can kind of take a look at what she can actually see. So you can see me here. So I'm looking at her and I smile at her. Hey, sweetheart. Now, she's not copying my expression. She's actually getting feel-good chemicals and then smiling. Now, she's constantly learning, so she's learning online. So if I do, like you've heard of Pavlov's dog, so if I do, I can, and I'll see if we can hear this from the microphone. Can everybody hear that? So, okay, that's, that's called a conditioned stimulus. So now I'm going to pair it, and I'm going to go, okay, let's see, and hey, sweetheart. Hey, you like the bell? Yeah, the bell is awesome. Okay, so now I've kind of paired that, and let's see what happens now when I do the bell. She's sort of learning her context. So she's basically learning online all the time. Okay, so then let's jump through to a few other things. And so you can see, and what, you, what we're looking at up here is basically a bunch of different neuromodulators. So she's got oxytocin, she's got dopamine, she's got all these different types of things driving her. Now, if I abandon her, I'm just going to sort of be a bit cruel here and sort of like hide from here. Now... She's going to sort of start wondering where I've gone. She knows I've gone off somewhere to the, to the uh, left. But if you start watching where the arrow pointer is, she's going to start getting stressed out. We're actually setting off this stress system. So, by the way, all of our animations are completely generated by neural network circuits. And those are driving the particular muscle. So she's getting actually upset now. We've got a cortisol's gone up because she's stressed out. Hey, sweetheart, it's okay. And she's listening to my voice and everything. So it's like, hey, don't cry. It's okay. Okay. So now we're going to be a bit more cruel and actually remove her face. So, um, and so you can see what's actually driving behind it. So literally what you're looking at now are the circuits actually driving the muscles, driving the face. So you can see the eyes, you can see the neural networks, you can see the nuclei and the brain stem which are driving the eye muscles. And as I'm moving around, it's just kind of looking. So if I'm, now what I'm going to do is kind of like, uh, whoops, um, change all my view keys. So, so we've got this whole model of the brain. You can go around, we've put the things in the appropriate anatomical place. So the idea here is we put our neural networks in the place where they really are. And now we're going to sort of, we can zoom into the brain stem and do stuff. We can even do other sorts of things here. So I, because the model's based on these computational neuroscience models, we can do all kinds of things. Like if I do this, I'm actually going to, I don't know if you can see this green light pumping up there, but what I'm doing is I'm actually like overriding the sort of, there's a, there's a whole thing called a thalamocortical loop, which is a cortex that sends stuff down to the thalamus, and that's a feedback loop, and if that builds up, you actually do something, and if it shuts down, you don't. So what we're kind of simulating now is actually Huntington's disease. So this is a case where people basically, all the muscles are moving too much. We can do the opposite and kill off those cells, and now it shuts down this feedback loop. This is Parkinson's disease. People want to move, but they can't. But we can build these things into the model. And now we come out of the model, and so we can even, I'll even show you the effect externally. So I'm now going to bump up the dopamine. So watch your pupils. So this is essentially like putting the baby on amphetamines. So it's like you can do all these types of things, because, but it actually drives the behavior of the model. It changes its learning abilities and all kinds of things. Now, let's just jump to another thing. And we've been teaching her to read. So I'm going to show you. This is a, her little first words book. So um, I'm from New Zealand, so I'm going to show you a sheep. Okay, right. Okay, sweetheart. What's this? What's this? Sheep. Good girl. Okay. And we'll see if she can read a word. Okay, what's this? What's this say? What's that? What's that say? Hey. Come on. What's that? Hey, look at me. Pay attention. Pay attention. It might be the lighting. Yeah, that could help. I'll show her some, some other word. Okay, hey, what's this? What's this? Cluck. Good girl. Okay, so she's hearing me and getting rewards and all kinds of things. So she's basically can... Hey, what's this? Look. Good girl. Okay, now I'll show you some things which I can't sort of, which take longer to train, which are these 